All right, so first and foremost, we are going to start a new Xcode project. So you're already pro at this, so you should know what to do. So again, you'll see the Xcode welcome screen, and we're just going to click on create a new Xcode project. And we're going to choose single view application under iOS, click next. And we're going to name our product Dicey with two E's because that's obviously cooler than one E. Now, team, you can leave none if you don't have one organization name, put it as your own name and organization identify. Again, this is a reverse domain name with either your full name or your company web address. So if you get confused about any of what I've just spoken about, go back to the I am rich tutorials and we've covered all of this in detail. So take a look at that if any of this sounds confusing. So make sure that your language is selected as Swift, device as iPhone and keep all of these three unchecked. And we're just gonna click next. Cool, I'm gonna save it on my desktop, making sure that the source control is unchecked and I'm just gonna go ahead and click create. All right, so now that we've set up our new project, we're gonna go ahead and design the storyboard. So head over to main.storyboard over here. And remember, if you don't have your file navigator showing, just you can toggle it like so. Great, so now we can see our uh, design canvas and we're gonna go into the object library over here. So making sure that this tab, the object library is selected in the bottom right corner. And we're gonna search for UI image view. And there it is, image view. So we're gonna drag it onto the canvas and we're gonna align it. So as soon as you move it around, you can see that Xcode starts being helpful or sometimes not so helpful by giving you all of these margins. So we're gonna shift it right up to the top left corner and then I'm going to toggle it to make it fill the entire screen. So currently I've got iPhone 6S canvas size selected and I'm in portrait mode. While all of these other sizes work just fine, we're going to stick to the iPhone 6S size so that we're all consistent. And I'm going to show you a bit later on how to set up constraints and use auto layout to make your screen look beautiful no matter what screen size you're running your app on. So that's all to come. But for now, we're just going to drag on a UI image view and make it fill the entire canvas. So now that you've got your image view, which again, as a reminder, an image view is just a picture frame. In order to add an image to our image view, we first have to have those images incorporated in our Xcode project. And if we have a look over here in the assets.exe assets folder, you can see that we've got absolutely nothing, nada in here that we can use. So first, of course, we have to add our image assets. So we've pre-made the image assets for you in all the right dimensions. So if you just head over to your browser, that could be Chrome or it could be Safari, whatever it is that you prefer. And in the uh, URL, you're gonna type in the address for the download link. And that download link can be found in the description text below this video. So just go ahead, copy and paste it into your browser. And there we go. We've got a zip file containing all the assets downloaded. I'm just gonna click on it in order to extract it. And then I'm gonna go into the download folder to try and find it. All right, so once you've extracted and located the Dicey Assets folder, you should be looking at something like this. So it's a folder that contains all the images that we're gonna be using in our project. And first and foremost, we're gonna add the app icons. So inside Xcode, locate the app icon folder and you should be able to see all the placeholders. And then we're gonna go back into the Dicey Assets folder and find the correct icons. Now, for those of you guys who are new to using Macs, using the command tab to switch between windows makes life so much easier and I highly recommend it. So switch window back to Dicey Assets and you can see that all of these uh, images are named according to the placeholders. So for this one, it's a 29 point image that's at 2x. So we're gonna find 29 at 2x and we're gonna drop it into the right place and just keep doing this for the rest of them. So you've already done this plenty of times with previous projects. So this shouldn't be difficult at all. Okay, so once you've got all of the app icon images placed into the slots, and you'll notice that we're not actually adding anything to the iPhone notification slot because we don't actually have any notifications for this project. If in a future project you're gonna be creating notifications, then just create assets that are 20 pixel by 20 pixels. So 
Once that's been done, the next part is adding the rest of the images. Now to make our lives easier, I'm just going to view this as a list. And what I can do is I can select um, all the images other than the app icons. So I'm going to click dice one and I'm going to hold down shift and select dicey logo. So that's going to select all of those and I'm going to chuck them in here underneath app icon. Then again, I'm going to select both new background and new background at 2x and drop them again into the assets folder. Now, again, for those of you guys who are new to Max, uh, holding down the shift button allows you to select all the files uh, between the start and the end and holding down the command button allows you to select disparate files. Now that we've incorporated all our images, it's important to check that your assets folder looks very similar to mine. So you've got dice one through to dice six, all the dice face images. Um, and we've got a dicey logo as well as a new background. So you'll notice that each of these um, folders has two images and that's exactly how we want it to be. So once you've confirmed that you've got all the images that you need, we can go back into main.storyboard and slot an image into this image view. So again, making sure that you've got it selected either on the canvas or in the document outline. We're going to head over to the attributes inspector, which is over here, and we're going to change the image that's held inside the image view. We're going to start writing new background and there we go. Xcode has already suggested that maybe we want the new background image. So just hit enter and you'll see it appear. A lovely green felt background for our Las Vegas Dice app. Okay, so once that's done, the next step is putting in that Dicey logo. So again, we're going to need a new image view. So in my objects library, I've still got image view showing up. If you don't, then you can just go and type UI image view again to search for it. So we're going to drag this one on close to the top ish somewhere that looks reasonably good and just drop it down. Okay, so time for a challenge. Now, throughout these video tutorials, I'll be issuing challenges that test your understanding and your grasp of some of the things that we've covered. So there's no point just watching me do everything and follow step by step because you're never going to be able to really make it your own. So instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to announce that here's a challenge and it's something that you would have done before or immediately before, and you're going to try and do it yourself. So this is a good point for you to pause the video and go into your own Xcode project and try to figure out yourself. And then afterwards, come back and see if the solution matches what you did. So are you ready for your first challenge? So did you remember how to do it? Now, if you didn't, this is just a quick reminder. With the image view selected, we're going to head over into the attributes inspector and change the image to Dicey logo. And click enter. There we go. Now, one thing about this image is that you can see that it's slightly stretched. It looks a little bit odd. And that's because our content mode is set to scale to fill, which is not what we want because it stretches the image in a non-proportional way. So we're going to hit this drop down and we're going to change it to aspect fit instead. Now you can see the proportions are back to how they should be and the image looks a lot nicer. Right, so next we are going to design our dice faces. So there will be a total of two. So we're going to drag on two image views onto our canvas. Now, instead of just resizing it by eye, this time we're going to resize it more precisely. So very often when you're working as an iOS developer, especially if you're working with professional designers, um, they'll actually provide you with exact location and sizes of all your UI elements. So we're just going to select one of the UI image views. And instead of being in the attribute inspector, we're going to head over to the size inspector. For our first dice face, we want the X value to be 40. So right next to the left, and then we want the Y value to be 273 and the width and the height to be both 120. There we go. And the other one, we're going to resize um, again, X to 215 
y is 273 and the width and the height are both again 120. There we go. So now as long as your canvas is the same size as mine, so just check here to make sure that you're inside the iPhone 6s sized canvas in portrait, then your screen should look exactly the same as mine because we've precisely inputted both the location as well as the height and width of our image views. So now it's time to put in some pictures. To do that, remember we have to be inside the attribute inspector. And I'm just gonna put dice one in both of them because right now it doesn't really matter. Right, so just one last step to complete our design and that's having a button. So a button that's called roll and when you press it, we can change the dice faces. So again, we're gonna head over to our object library and we're gonna search for button or UI button. And there we go. And we're gonna click and drag it onto the screen. Now it doesn't matter right now where, it, where you leave it. We're gonna adjust that later on. But firstly, we're gonna modify the appearance of this button to something that pleases us. So we're gonna change the title of the button from button to roll or something else that makes sense to you. We're gonna change the font by clicking on this small T button here and going from system to custom. And I'm going to change the size to maybe 30 or 40. So this depends on you again. See what looks right to you. After all, you are designing your own app. And now you can see that we've got dot, dot, dot here. And that's because the text for the button is now too big to fit within this small constraint. So we're just going to use the toggle to make it just a bit bigger. And there we go. There's our roll button. Now the blue doesn't really show up very nicely with the green, so I'm gonna change the text color to white and I'm gonna change the background of the button to um, have a color. Now, unintuitively, the background button, the button background color isn't located near the rest of the color settings, but instead it's quite a few scrolls away down here. And I'm just going to pick something that I used recently, like this nice salmon color. But you can also change it to something of your own liking just by going to other and then picking any color that takes your fancy. But I'm going to stick to a salmonish color. And then we can just adjust the button to make it look reasonably nice. And there, I'm happy with my design. So go nuts, this is your design, do whatever you like. You can really make it your own. All right, so that's all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at how to link up all of these designs with code. How we can start making the roll button actually do something when we click on it. How we can change the dice image faces all by writing our own code. All that and more in the next lesson. So I'll see you there.